question reads as you are provided with a C program that uses a function swap that has the parameters and x and and y that means the parameters are passed by reference or by pointer addresses okay so the uh, in the declaration the pointers would be specified of the swap function in the swap function the declaration would have pointers and the call calling function or the at the time of calling the swap function we would pass the addresses of these variables x and y all right so it is call by reference but using pointers it is a concept that you must know so now the function says that there is an array given to you initially there is a variable whose value is assigned to be zero the variable is known as done and it will control our function how many times it runs so a variable i is declared while done is equal to zero so let's make our array first it is three five one four six and two So this is our array and let's write down the indices 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so done is initially 0. Done is assigned the value 0. Now when we enter the loop because done is equal to equal to 0, the value of done is changed to 1. Now the first for loop says that i is equal to 0. So we maintain a variable i whose value is 0. If i is less than equal to 4, yes, we check this condition. Array of i is less than array of i plus 1. That means array of 0 is less than array of 1, yes. So we swap both these. If we swap these two values, our array now becomes 3, 5, 1, 4, 6 and 2. Alright, sorry. 5. 3 we swap these two values because the value of array of i was less than the value of array of i plus 1 now we go back to the loop okay so a curly brace is missing here there would be a curly brace after this if statement so uh, this for loop only contains a single if and single if contains a single swap call all right so we exchange these two values now we'll go back to this for loop uh, we'll increment i the value of i changes to 1 i is less than 4 so again we'll check if array of i that means 0 1 2 3 4 5 is value of this less than the value of 2 that means array of 1 is it less than array of 2 no so we'll go back to the for loop increase the value of i and again check now we'll check is the value of array of 2 less than the value of array of 3 because array of i is 2 and i plus 1 would be 3 yes the value of array of 2 is less so we interchange these values 5 3 4 1 6 and 2 all right and the value of i would be again incremented when we go at the loop i is still less than 4 so we check for i equal to 3 0 1 2 3 is i of 3 less than its next value yes so we again swap these values 5 3 4 6 1 2 all right you can write the index every time if you are getting confused at any point. So I was 3, 3 was a of, array of 3 was less than array of 4. So I swap these values and I get this array. Now a value of i becomes 4. Value of i is still equal to 4. So we'll again perform the comparison. 1 is still less than 2. We'll compare these two and we'll swap them for another time so the array becomes 5 3 4 6 2 and 1 and the indices are 4 and 5 all right now when we go up in the loop and the value is incremented again since it does not satisfy this checking condition i is not less than 
or equal to 4, we come out of this loop. Now, in the second loop, the value of i is again assigned to be 5. So, we get value of i equal to 5 and the checking condition is i is to be greater than or equal to 1 and i is decremented here and in this for loop, we check if i array of i is greater than array of i minus 1. So, continuing with this array that we obtained 5, 3, 4, 6, 2, 1 and the indices 4, 5. So, we will compare is array of 5 less greater than array of 4? No. So, we will move ahead. Value of i would change to 4 is array of 4 greater than array of 3? No, we will again change the value and decrement it to 3. Now we will change, now we will check array of 3, is it greater than the array of the value that is present at array of 2? Yes, so we will again swap these values, so the values would become 4, 3, 6, 4, 2 and 1 and write down the indices so that you don't get confused. Now coming back above we change the value of i it becomes 2. This and this would be compared array of 2 is again greater than array of 1 which is 3. So these two are swapped again 4, 2, 1. Now i becomes 1 again and this is the last time this loop will run. So we compare array of 1 and array of 0. Again the condition is satisfied 6 is greater than 5. So we swap them. Alright now you have to be careful that in this if condition every time swap was being executed the variable done was was being set to 0. So the first time swap was executed the variable done would have been ex uh, set to 0. Alright. So the in all these iterations the variable or in all every time the if condition was correct and it, the swap call was executed variable done was set to 0 so at the end done would be 0 and we would come back to this loop and check is done equal to equal to 0 yes now we again change the value of done to be 1 in this loop we again come back i is again set to 0 all right it is less than 4 and now we check is r array of 0 less than array of 1. These were the indices. Is array of 0 less than array of 1? No. So we increment i. i is changed to 1. Is array of 1 less than array of 2? No. Again i is changed to value 2. Is array of 2 less than array of 3? Yes. So in this case swapping would occur. So the array would become 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1 and when value of i gets incremented to 3 you will see array of 3 is not less than array of 4 and similarly array of 4 is not less than array of 5. So this loop would again terminate now when again value of i would come out to be 5 you would see that array of 5 is array of 5 greater than array of 2 no 2 is greater than 3 no and since it is the complete decreasing order this condition would never hold true that means a later element would never be greater than the previous element so we would never enter inside this if statement done would not be set to 0 again and it would be 1 so if we come back to the while loop it won't be executed so now at the end since we had to tell what would be the value at, of the array at the end that means we had to print array of 3 so now what is the value of array of 3 this is 0 1 2 3 
4 and 5. So the value is at index 3, the value is 3. Alright, so that is your final answer. You have to be careful in executing all the iterations. Don't uh, hurry up and change or in mix the indices with the values because many a times uh, students make these mistakes. I hope you understood this question. In this question, you are given a code and you are said, you are told that the following function computes x raised to power y for positive integers x and y and you are given a particular code and here you are asked that which of the following conditions is true before every iteration of the loop. So you can assume any two values of x and y and then based on all the iterations that you perform you will get a final result and at the end you can check that which of the four options which out which one out of the four options is true before every iteration so let's take two simple values of x and y uh, i am assuming x to be 2 and y to be 5 okay so I pass x to be 2 and y to be 5 in this question. Result or res is initialized to 1. A is assigned the value of x that means 2 and B is assigned y that means 5. So I in the while loop I check the condition that B is not equal to 0. Yes B is 5 not equal to 0. Then in the if condition b modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0 no b is not a multiple of 2 so if condition is false else condition is entered and in this condition what we are doing the value of result is changed to result into a so the new value of result is 1 into 2 that is 2 and b becomes b minus 1 which is 5 minus 1 4 all right now in the second this was iteration 1 in the second iteration we again come back while b is not equal to 0 yes we enter the loop if b modulo 2 is equal to equal to 0 yes b is 4 so we enter in the if condition in the if condition we change the value of a a now becomes a into a that means in the previous iteration only, only b and result was changed so a was unchanged and the value of a is still 2 so 2 into 2 becomes 4 a's new value is 4 and b's value is changed to half which is 4 by 2 which is half and this was iteration 2 all right now coming back again while b is not equal to 0 yes b is 2 and it is not equal to 0 we again check the condition of if, if condition is again true because b is again the multiple of 2. So we enter into the if condition. Again the value of a is changed and a is multiplied with a. That means square of a which is 16. And now b is again changed to half which is 1. And this was iteration 3. Alright. Coming to the loop condition again b is still not 0 it is 1 so we enter here in this case if condition is false so we enter into the else condition else condition says to change the value of result to result into a a is 16 the last value of result was 2 so 16 into 2 becomes 32 and b is changed to b minus 1 which is equal to 0 and this was iteration 4. Since b's value is now equal to 0, we would not make any other iteration of the while loop and we'll just return this result. So this result is actually x raised to the power y that is 2 raised to power 5 which is equal to 32. Okay, now we have to tell which of the four condition is true after every iteration of the loop. So 
is the final result equal to a raised to power b after every iteration let's check it out after the first iteration the value of a is 2 and the value of b is 4 our final result is 32 so a raised to power 4 is equal to 16 and it is not equal to 32 so in this case a raised to power b does not hold true that means a raised to power b equal to x raised to power y is not true okay because x raised to power y is 2 raised to power 5 which is not equal to a raised to power b in the first iteration itself so we would not check it further coming to the second uh, option that we have provided it says result multiplied by a raised to the power y is it equal to result multiplied by x raised to power b in every iteration so let's check after the first iteration the value of result is 2 2 multiplied by 2 and raised to the power y y is 5 is it equal to 2 multiplied by x which is 2 raised to the power b b in this iteration is 4 so it becomes 4 raised to power 5 and 4 raised to power 4 these two values are again not equal in the first iteration itself so this option is also incorrect now coming to the third option let's check if this value result into a raised to power b is equal to x raised to power y after every iteration so after first iteration result into that means 2 into a raised to power b a is 2 and b is 4 2 raised to power 4 is equal to 2 raised to power 5 which is equal to x raised to power y sorry x raised to power y which is completely correct now coming in the second iteration result is still 2 2 multiplied by a raised to power b here in the second iteration a is 4 and b is 2 so again it comes out to be 32 which is equal to x raised to power y coming to the third iteration result is still 2 multiplied by 16 again gives you 32 so this is also equal to x raised to power y and in the last iteration the uh, result is equal to 32 and uh, a value so the result is equal to 32 in the last iteration multiplied by the last value of a is 16 raised to the power b 0 which is equal to 13 into 1 and again equal to 32 which is equal to x raised to power y so this is the one condition that is true after every iteration so this is the correct answer you need not check the fourth part itself because you have checked for all the iterations here you can take any other values of x and y and calculate the option which is correct for this question and correspondingly find out what conditions hold so that was all for today's lecture i hope you understood the question thank you for watching the video please like and share the video if you understood it and subscribe to the channel of easy engineering classes for more lectures on our preparation series as well as other computer science related subjects stay tuned good luck